What is up you guys, it is Stu here, and welcome to my channel, or if you're new, oh wait, uh... Are you alright? I got this. What is up you guys, and welcome back to my channel, it is Stu, or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be something that's so controversial, and I know you guys freak out whenever I do it, but it's going to be on overlapping blonde. This is something that can be super scary, but if it's done in the right way, it can be super safe and it can be super effective to achieve the look that you are wanting for your clients. So, if you're ready to learn all my tips and tricks on overlapping blonde, stay tuned. So, in the instance I need to overlap blonde to make it a little lighter, the first thing I'm going to be doing is examining the hair. Usually whenever I'm sectioning a client off like so, I'm going through and examining their hair to make sure their hair can actually handle being lightened. It's kind of like knocking out two birds in one stone. As I'm sectioning, I'm checking out the hair. I'm asking myself a few questions. Is the hair dry and brittle? Can it handle another session of lightener? What is the natural remaining pigment? If the hair is pale yellow or white without being toned, there's no way it can handle actually being lightened again. Because if you do that, it's just going to snap like bubble gum and cut become gummy and just break right off and that's exactly what we don't want the second thing we are going to be talking about is mixing and formulating what i've mixed up for this client is goldwell oxycure my ride or die lightener 20 volume and olaplex i will always use a bond builder such as olaplex whenever i'm overlapping especially honestly i use it anytime olaplex is what's going to keep the hair as healthy as it can while being lightened that's a rule for me at the salon at all times on virgin hair or previously colored hair previously lightened hair anything i'm always adding an olaplex Olaplex is my favorite bond builder. I've used it since the beginning of my career and I swear that is liquid gold. If anyone is unfamiliar with Olaplex, it's a bond building line that's targeted towards repairing and restoring damaged hair. That's why it's liquid gold for us hairstylists since we can create amazing results while keeping the hair as healthy as possible. So I just want to make it clear that it is super important to always use a bond builder when overlapping. All right, step number three, or rule number three, never go above 20 volume, ever. Trust me, slow and steady wins the race. 20 volume is strong enough to give you the lift that you want while not being strong enough to compromise the previously lightened ends. The last thing you wanna do while lightening hair that's already been bleached is bust open that cuticle or over process it resulting in ends being left gummy or super dry or even breaking off because that would be a nightmare however if you're a slower foiler or need to have a little more power to uplift to the client's regrowth you can always use a higher developer on the client's natural hair while overlapping the previously lightened hair with a 10 or a 20 volume developer So, something else you want to keep in mind is the client's hair history. So important. This client came in and during the consultation, she told me she hasn't colored her hair in over two years. So mainly my canvas is all virgin hair, but this client does have some gold banding towards her ends that we want to pop open and brighten up a little bit. So that's the reasoning behind why I'm overlapping today. I'm only using 20 volume because after examining her hair, I don't think I need anything stronger to lift her regrowth as well as lighten the those ends all at the same time and honestly for me I don't ever really go over 20 volume and on to rule number five which is should you fully saturate or feather through this is something that you've got to ask yourself going back to examining the hair like I was talking about is I'm looking at it from the roots all the way down to the ends this way I know if I should fully saturate the client's ends or just feather through a few areas that might need it as a stylist it's up to you and your best judgment to decide on that but however I am overlapping completely on most areas of her hair but there are a few areas I'll just feather through on her ends that just need an extra little pop. Fully saturating the hair is what's going to give you maximum lift and feathering will give you lift but at a slower pace or a targeted area that needs it. Another way you can overlap is by saturating the ends and just kicking them out of the foil. I mainly use this technique when the client has like buildup on their hair from products or purple shampoo buildup. We all have that client that over purple shampoos and they just need a little extra oomph without any extra lift. So I will just go through saturate the hair kick it out of the foil and just let it process in open air nice 
safely and slowly. Another thing to consider whenever you're lightening hair is when to use heat. Now listen, I am a big fan of using heat when lightening hair, but for processes like this, I try to avoid it at all costs unless I really need a little extra oomph to get me to that desired level. If I do use heat with a process like this whenever I am overlapping, I usually will use my blow dryer with a diffuser on it and just hit certain spots that need it, and then I go by the rule of thumb, however long I added heat, I give it that much time to cool off. So if I heat things up for five minutes, Minutes, I give it five minutes to cool off. This is a little trick I learned in hair school from one of my instructors and it's to add an even amount of heat distribution and then an even amount of lift. And rule number seven is something I'm going to make you guys promise me and that is to always keep checking your foils. Anytime you're working with lightener, it's so important to check your foils. The client's hair integrity should always be the goal anytime you're doing any kind of service in the salon. And as soon as the foils are light enough to rinse, it's so important to go ahead and rinse the ones that are ready and let the ones that are not ready keep processing. Once the hair is at a perfect level 10, there isn't any more pigment to lift out of the hair. So lifting past pale yellow is just the path to damaged hair. And we want to avoid that at all costs because honestly, if you're not going to avoid damage, then you shouldn't be watching this video on how to overlap safely. So after she is fully processed, the next step is to remove all of the lightener from the hair. Whenever I'm using lightener, I always make sure to clarify the hair after at the shampoo bowl. Using a clarifying shampoo is going to ensure that all of the lightener is out of the hair. So whenever I tone my client, I'm going to have the best end results. It's also going to strip out any impurities or build up from the client's hair, as well as giving us a blank canvas to tone on. It's also going to ensure that all the lightener is out so her hair doesn't keep processing. Always suggest doing a treatment after you've rinsed the hair. Lightening the hair can make it super dry, so using a moisturizing treatment at the bowl not only adds moisture back into the hair, but it also helps close down the cuticle a little bit so it feels a lot better. I usually always use Olaplex number no. 2, which is their bond perfector, and you can use it in the salon anytime you lighten or color hair. It's even great for clients to come in and just get as a treatment in between their color sessions. I like letting a treatment like this sit in the client's midst to end while I'm doing the root smudge. This way I'm saving time and killing two birds with one stone. The mids to ends can soak up the treatment while the root smudge is depositing that color on their root. It also is going to act as a barricade so the root color won't transfer further down than what we desire it to. And the final rule whenever it comes to overlapping previously lightened hair is to dust, trim, or cut. It is crucial whenever you are going lighter. Obviously, there's going to be a little bit of damage, but the way to maintain your hair and make it feel as healthy as possible, to keep it as healthy as possible, and to keep it growing is to dust, trim, or cut. Honestly, I prefer doing a trim over anything, but at least dusting those ends if the client doesn't want to lose much length. So a good health trim is always important in a blonding service. And those are my 10 rolls for overlapping hair after it's been previously lightened or bleached before. You guys, I really hope you learned something that you can take into the salon. If you did love this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Make sure to follow me over on Instagram. Check out my podcast. All of that is linked below. And then check out this after. I am obsessed with the results. And let me know what you think of this transformation in the comments below. And thank you so, so, so much for watching this video.